Sisyphus was struggling to keep the stone in motion, as he pushed the boulder purely just to qualify its myth. Though he knew that nothing good could ever come from such devotion, he didn't dare to stop it lest it cease to thus exist. So he toiled throughout eternity to push it to the last, but the summit drew no nearer and the stone just simply grew, till it shrouded the whole planet in the shadow that it cast, and it morphed into the mountain for the prophets of the few. And the hill where he'd been standing was forgotten in the rush, in the quest to scale the mountain and the chance to see the view. And though he longed for understanding from the stone that he had pushed, the mountain knew no mercy and refused to pay his due. So his labour and his efforts were essentially in vain, in the macroeconomics of consumer and consumed, till he started asking questions of the nature of the game, and discovered that its fabric wasn't what he once assumed. Money is, I think it's freedom, because if you have money you can probably do in some way what you want. Money is, is, is the, the grease that greases the wheels. It's a trust in um, what's happening in the banks and uh, that they're going to deliver the money back to you. Money is uh, the root of all evil, it's how we keep score. Money's fun. <laughs> money is something that you can use to get what you want because you can't eat it but you can definitely buy things that you want like holidays and homes and you know gets you whatever you need but what backs it up apart from the gold in the bank which none of us ever see or touch it's it's held in trust we just trust that this means something but when he was still a young man picking pebbles off the strand he thought that money had a purpose and its value could be known where it held its weight in gold and supply once met demand so he signed up to its service and began to push the stone and for years he never noticed that the world was being robbed distracted as he was by being gainfully employed where success was simply measured by the stature of the job and not by doing something that he actually enjoyed but he basked in the prestige of being tasked with the pursuit of producing entertainment for the cogs in the machine, while debt became the seed of modern economic fruit, and gold was just the figment of a strange and distant dream. And he signed up to the glitz of what the system had created, to the crass accumulations and distractions of the day, just to find out that the myth that he subscribed to was outdated when the crash was orchestrated just to wash it all away. Yet still the fabrication was held on to as a fact, though the soil where it was planted was a thick and heavy grey, and the way its machinations were pre-programmed to react was to shift the chains in focus just to look the other way. And as the fires were extinguished down the quiet country lanes, the cities blew their bluster back into their busted blooms to resurrect the thirst for all their artificial gains till the next time that they burst and that the market lay in ruins. All of this has reverted back to we need more debt, easy availability of debt, cheaper debt and so forth. And that abandonment happens precisely because our monetary systems are directly linked to that formed money. We need liquidity to constantly inject into the economy in order for the economy not to go to stall because our productive capacity in the economy is not growing as fast as we need it to grow. Politicians need that as well. But the more we inject this liquidity, the more we create the money, the bigger is the claim on future resources becomes. Where that claim is going to fall in the end is the million dollar question. Because those of us who would know that today can directly predict probably the timing and certainly the source of the next financial crisis. I don't have that kind of crystal ball. But all I can say is that you can't have a free lunch forever. The check will arrive sooner or later.
The pretense of the veil came tumbling down and brought the mountain crashing to the sea. Yet still the myth prevailed as all around were sold this tale of cold austerity. Unless we row together that we'll drown within the floods of false economy and that we must still place our brittle trust in systems built on nothing now but dust. But where's the strength of our resolve when debt is siphoned off that source of trust in gold though we may claim ourselves evolved and yet still do as bid as did and will be told who learn it seems if only to forget that hope and dreams cannot be bought or sold but knowing such still place our brittle trust in systems built on nothing now but dust and who can look with conscience on the earth but not be drawn to sadness and despair when how we quantify or measure worth is seldom just and rarely ever fair when death is celebrated more than birth and toxins fill our water and the air how then can we still place our brittle trust in systems built on nothing now but dust and how can we plant trees in the cement or flowers in the cracked and arid clay whose seeds are but the gods that heaven sent to meet that stone and be but turned away and who could light the torch of discontent but not be thus devoured by its flame yet still proclaim to place their brittle trust in systems built on nothing now but dust And as he asked, so too he thus received, a spark to set alight the darkest cave, as with the web he set about to weave, and plot a path that anyone could pave, where we no longer had to be deceived, nor bound within the shackles of the slave, but could then be as free men formed from trust of so much more than particles of dust. He left the stone alone and travelled down into the mine to create a world of equity and freedom from control with blockchain as the blueprint of societal designs and bitcoin as the currency of neither debt nor gold. And bit by bit he forged a new consensus algorithm to trade without dependence on the bonds of servitude and formed a growing network there that quickly found a rhythm with discontented citizens whose spirits were renewed. He laid the blocks and linked the chains with care and due precision, with the skill the master masons would commend to see fulfilled, and made the stock supply a finite number in the vision to protect intrinsic value in the world he tried to build. Soon whispers grew to chatter, and the chatter rose to talk, and the talk became a chorus that the system could be fought, and from crawling through the mines he then emerged and rose to walk, as he called to those who'd listen that control could not be bought. And as the fervour turned to fever, and the fever pitched and heaved, his phoenix took its leave and ditched the shelter of the nest, and the further that it soared, it meant the more who now believed that uneven distribution of wealth could be addressed. And as it spread its wings and stretched them out across the skies with red and purple hues and burning amber in its breast, the ocean mirrored back the cobalt blue within its eyes and beckoned forth the bird to represent and manifest. And it drew upon the elemental essence of the source as it climbed towards the transcendental shape of things to come. 
but as Icarus before it grew distracted by the force and flew into the blinding effervescence of the sun. And Sisyphus awoke, as if from living in a dream, to see the seeds of all creation hold the roots of their decay, and the trust that's only measured by or learned from a machine is just dust within the desert as he turned.